Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas! You know, if you grew up back in the days, like I really grew up, you know, when you Christmas, Christmas, everybody sing. And I don't know what your songs are during Christmas, but it's a conversation worth having. 2022, Christmas Day is here, and we are very excited as Kusa up to be able to share this moment with you. And our conversation is around the whole thing of Christmas. Now, there are many things that happen around Christmas Day, and uh, many people have questioned about the, 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 vali the, the validity of Christmas Day, and I mean, should we celebrate it or not, blah, blah, blah. And so you want to engage briefly on this conversation today, and I'm going to be helped with my very good friends and gentlemen, uh, Pastor Justice Hapo Monyewe, Mr. Cameraman Giddy Giddy Maji Maji. No, not the one, but really Giddy 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 Maji. But then, Giddy 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 is the whole uh, basis of Christmas. Yes, so the year 25 December. Uh, no. <laughs> I didn't know. We, we don't know when Jesus was born. Uh, kwa Bible tunambia in Matthew 21 yeah. that Jesus was born during the days of King Herod. Unamuka when Jesus was born, ali torokea Egypt. Yes. And then after Herod, I may die in Delhi Road. So it was around between 6 and 4 BC. Mm -hmm. So that's when uh, Herod ali kufa. Right. So that's that's the time that Jesus was born. But, but Atuna, you, you we, month, we don't have the day, the month, and that's not important because if God al kwantaka, if that was really important, uh -huh. For us to know angekuwa meka kwa scripture yake. But sisa kutuambia, oh, okay. it doesn't matter. So kuna so many theories, suji paga nini, but it doesn't matter. Right. So 25th, we are just commemorating the day that Jesus was born. That 25 will talk about it. Yeah, so in my research, kuna so many, kuna so many reasons what wana sema 25. But tunakumuka the Roman, I think the Roman church, mm -hmm. around uh, 354 AD. Alright. Even 300, like 300 years after Christ. Yes. So apu vondo waliamu, and now we're going to celebrate this. Mm -hmm. Kuna so many theories. Mm -hmm. There are people who are celebrating like uh, some pagans who used to celebrate All right. one of their gods there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So even really kuwa set. But so over time, right now we are celebrating uh, just the birth of Jesus Christ. Actually, many scholars when they study, they mm -hmm. find, you'll mm -hmm. find that Jesus was born between May and June. Oh, in the when, when yeah, you when you follow yeah, okay. when you study, but that's oh. why you're saying that's not important, right? And you'll find some people make a very big deal out of it when I discredit Christianity because, mm -hmm. but no matter you're celebrating Paga, no. That's why I was reading a quote uh, here. There's someone right, who says that right. uh because you're just finding an excuse to reject God, right? Yeah, a man rejects God neither because of intellectual demands uh -huh. nor because of scarcity of evidence. Okay, a man rejects God because of moral resistance that refuses to admit his need for God. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if Jesus was born in May, June, February. Right. Yeah. What matters is Jesus Christ was born, yeah. And after he was born, right, that's why we have BC and AD, right? Mm -hmm. AD means uh, an domini. The year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he changed history forever. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Interesting. Nini you miss narrative narrative can you know give in? I'm just scared, just just so just scared. Saddam could have a story with the other. I could have a story with Dora. Saddam 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 do your studies and research. It is not necessarily 25 when Jesus Christ was born, that's okay, and we want to build the conversation then on why did Jesus come. But before that, it's important for us to appreciate at least to Najua, yes, well, is a liwa, all right. Um, whether it is a liwa March, June, July, blah, blah, and this is my calendar spirit, Najua, somebody else came with those. The Jews are going to follow a different calendar system and, mm. and they named it differently. I think mm. one of the things I like that you said is if God uh, thought that the particular time of his birth, uh, the date and the time and the month was important, would have let us know. So, 
Mary anajua, alright, but Mary mm. did, unaona? Mm. Yeah. Joseph anajua, Joseph did. Mm. Anajua. Mm. anajua. Mm. Mama John the Baptist anajua. Eh, Shepa John anajua hiyo mandi ilikuwa gani? The the wise, the wise men wanajua hiyo hiyo mm. mandi ilikuwa gani? In the Old Testament for instance, unakumbuka uh, Bible uh, akina Moses wakishatoka Egypt na nini? Kulikuwa na months zilikuwa mentioned. I mean, ile mantu walikuwa na celebrate Jews yeah, yeah, sure. because they were important yeah. and they were critical for the life of the Jews at that time. And so there are months there as the month of Nisan, the month of this, the month of that. Mm-hmm. Kuna miezi zimewekwa particularly some events happened around those months. And so we know those ones are important and there's a particular month. But for the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, the Bible is silent about it. Jesus Christ did not necessarily think that uh, it is important for us to know um, when he was born. Though we know that the only one that we know and we need to commemorate is when he died. Yeah. I know the Bible does not give us a command to celebrate Christmas. Yeah. But for sure, on the last supper, he said, you know, do this in remembrance of me. Hmm. Because yeah. as often as you do this, you proclaim my death until I, I return. Anyway, yeah. so, Buddha, I'm a mdenge, wherever you are, you know, this thing is there. So people celebrate Christmas. If you want to make Christmas first of December, knock yourself <laughs> out. <laughs> if you to celebrate for <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> The thing is, Nabili Gidea Mesema, Yesu alizaliwa na aliishi na li change the face of history. Now, we need to respond to the question then. Why did Jesus come? Because when he came, may not necessarily be a matter of urgency because he actually did come. I think we need to answer the question then. Why did Jesus come? Uh, before answering that question, what do you want to say about what you want to Is it is somewhere on earth? It's snowing. Need to go. Some on Jesus was born at the perfect time right. mm. in history, in God's plan. Right. Galatians 4.4. 4. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Asimah, but when the fullness of time had come, mm. God sent forth his son. Mm. Uh, born of a woman, born under the law. Mm-hmm. When the fullness of time came, like when the perfect time for, for that God had planned for Christ to be born had come, he came. Christ was born. Okay. So. Uh, why was Christ born? Why did he come? Tuta tuta kufa sana na First John. Alright. And First John three gives us an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, one one of the answer in verses five. Uh, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. Right. Uh, and in him is no sin. So basically, why did Christ come? Why did Christ appear? He was in one, before I even answer that is, the word appear presupposes that he had existed even before he came. Okay. It's just that we didn't see him. He wasn't in our sight. Right. First John okay. chapter one, Utona Nasema, that which we saw, that which we touched, that he anaonyesha how he experienced Christ mm-hmm. using the five senses. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he wasn't just a spirit. He was tangible, a real, a real flesh. Person. Yeah. Man. So he appeared now that we can see him, we can be with him for this reason, so that he can take away our sins. Okay. So why did Christ come? Why was Christ born? He was born of a woman so that he, take, he could take away our sins. Mm-hmm. So the sins of man could not be taken taken away by the blood of goats and sheep, mm-hmm. as Hebrews chapter ten reminds us. All right. But only men <coughs> will pay for their own sin and their sins completely. Mm-hmm. Now Christ had to come in the flesh of man so that he can pay the sins of man. So <coughs> sin will uh, the penalty of sin will be paid. Okay. In these two ways, mm-hmm. either will you poem when you are by your own flesh and your own life, mm-hmm. or Christ will appear. 
Right. And that's that's now where salvation the gospel comes and the good news is that now me mistake kujilipia dhambi sababu I won't be able to pay for it completely. Mm. Nita suffer forever. Right. And for that for uh, because of that I am giving my life to Christ so that his life becomes my life. Okay. I die with him and I'm resurrected with him now I have his life right. in me. Uh, Romans chapter 5. Mm-hmm. I mean chapter 6 verses 1. Okay. So he came. he came to become yeah to take away our sins mm-hmm. or you can say he came to become the sin bearer the sin bearer mm-hmm. all right so jesus christ came to take away our sins na hiyo ni important because i mean we could not take away our own sin mm-hmm. um i think contrary to that probably as we, as you come to the end of our conversation we'll try and see how then that one is critical in our celebration and in our appreciation of the day why else did jesus christ come So uh Jesus also came so that he may destroy the work of the devil. Mm-hmm. Yeah when you okay. you look at Ephesians chapter 1 uh, chapter 2 from verse 1 there you, we are told how we are dead in sins how we used to live following the way of this world right. and the rule of the kingdom of the air mm-hmm. the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All right. So in Ephesians you okay, so many explain how as uh, non believers mm. They follow the the prince of the air who is the devil they are in tra- in their transgression okay so that's the work of the devil sin so now Jesus Christ came to destroy this work and we read in 1 John 3:8 mm-hmm. the one who does what is sinful is of the devil okay because the devil has been sinning from the beginning the reason the son of god appeared was to destroy the devil's work okay. so when you read this verse mm-hmm. The work that is being destroyed is the sinful is sin that that what Jesus came to destroy. Mm. Yeah, so basically that's what uh, Jesus came to do to destroy the works of Satan. Yeah. And and you're saying the work of Satan is sin dhambi ndio kazi ya shetani yeah the way, the way the devil to remember me in Ephesians chapter 2 may capture people in their kingdom of darkness mm-hmm. amewa mm-hmm. making people to follow him right so ndio hapo hivi verse inatuambia amekuja ku ku destroy ndio in hebrews pia inatuambia since the children have flesh and blood we too share he too shared in their humanity so that by his death mm. he might break the power of him who holds mm. the power of death right. that is the devil so he destroys the work of satan by mm. his death yes mm. i mean it's interesting because he's mentioning by his death and we're talking about mm. his birth and we see then that his death is what is most critical i think this, i mean if you read scripture then it it starts opening up your eyes to some greater reality so he he came jesus came to take away our sins and jesus christ came to destroy the work of satan why else did jesus christ come just oh, why did jesus christ come okay um the other reason of course is to bring us eternal life bring us eternal life yes okay um there is a a statement that we like saying in church aliye na mwana ana ushuhuda mhm uh, first john chapter 5 from verse 9 mm-hmm. it says that we accept man's testimony mm-hmm. but god's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of god which he has given about his son mm-hmm. says that whoever has the son of god has this testimony in his heart Mm-hmm. So aliye na mwana na ushuhuda. Right. And whoever does not have the son of God then he has made God to be a liar because he hasn't believed what God has said mm-hmm. about his son. Right. And then it moves on to tell us what this testimony mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. or rather what God has said even concerning his son. Right. And uh he says this um in um in verse 11 mm-hmm. that uh, and this is the record that God has given to us uh, that God has given to us eternal life mm-hmm. now what i love about this verse first of all is the punctuation marks they really have used the punctuation marks Bravi. in this verse <laughs> uh, <laughs> <In> hebrew, <laughs> the hebrew punctuation marks <laughs> 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 Max, these oh, are my full oh, stop, comma, comma hyphen, <laughs> colon, semicolon, <laughs> open inverted, close inverted, etc. <laughs> yeah, it says that God has given to us eternal life. Then we have a comma, uh-huh. and this life is in His Son. Full stop. 
you know that full stop means there is no <laughs> way <laughs> <end. laughs> <laughs> yes, that full stop. You know, and this life is in his son. In other words, there is nowhere else that you are able to get this eternal right, life. Right, right, right. A- and that is the importance of, of this. Mm. So that uh, there is nowhere else. So regardless of all the debates going on around the religious, different religious groups, yes. uh, eternal life is only found in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. This life is in his son. Right. Now, it continues to say that uh, whoever has the son of God, has life, full st- comma, and whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life, mm-hmm. full stop. You know, so mm. it's either you have Jesus or you have no Jesus right. in your life. Right. There is no other way to mm. get or to gain eternal life. Right. And so Christ came so that he, we can have eternal life All right. and be able to live with him so that for us, um, even when it comes to the whole subject of death, of course, we do not fear. We do not uh, mourn like people who have no hope. Uh, as Paul tells us in Thessalonians, you know, for us, we have hope. We know that even after we leave this body, that we shall live together with our Lord forever and ever. Mm. And so and so that's why you see even the many Christians even being martyred, you know, fearing death and such. It's not an issue because we know that, you know, this will not put a full stop in our lives. Right. Uh, we have have life and life eternal with our Lord Jesus Christ. So amazing. Christ came so that we may have eternal life. All right, amazing, yeah. amazing. Well, um, just to reiterate what we're saying today. So we are we are we are really talking about Christmas. One to myself, Jesus Akuzalius due to twenty five, blah blah. But the most important thing is that Jesus Christ was born. And we are answering then as you look at the article of Christmas and a few days to come, you're going to be celebrating Christmas. We are asking, so why did Jesus Christ come? How do I approach Christmas in a more objective way? Then I need to understand why he came. And you're saying that number one, Jesus Christ came to take away our sins because we would never take away our own sins. The Bible says that the blood of sheep and goat was not enough. And that's why Jesus Christ had to die so that his blood would wash our sins away. But secondly, we're saying that Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of Satan because Satan has power and there is no human being minus the authority and the power of Christ that work in them who can be of any challenge or match to the devil. The devil will beat you pants down. And so Jesus Christ came to destroy the work of Satan because it is not within our power to destroy it. But thirdly, we're also saying that Jesus Christ came to bring us eternal life, suggesting then that prior to that, we were in eternal damnation uh, to some extent because of the sin of Adam. And so you realize that Christmas is just beyond chapels and Yamachoma and all those things that we'll probably talk about later. Um, right about now, before we continue, I want you to check out the Kuza app on your phone. If you've not downloaded it so far, please go on your app store uh, in your Android or your iOS and download the Kusa app. If you have a Windows phone, well, your window is closed. Anyway, so you want to download it and have it and also go to www.kusaapp.com and you can check out a lot of things that you have there. There are blogs, there are podcasts, there are other conversations there that will be meaningful for you. If you are not born again, there is a Receive Christ button. The top right corner of your gadget, whichever you're using, there's a Receive Christ button. Click it, you'll have a representation or a presentation rather of the gospel. And if you are convicted in your heart and you want to turn to Christ, then you can let us know by sending us a message and we will try and help you to grow in your work with the Lord. Well, there are many other reasons. I want to explore maybe like three more other things about uh, why Jesus Christ came. And I know if we sat here and just open scripture, but so, so far to me, Jesus Christ came to take away our sins. He came to destroy the work of Satan. He came to bring us eternal life. Or what else? Uh, did Jesus, why else did Jesus Christ come? Um, tag to the first point. Yes. Because uh, to take away the sins of those who will believe in him. Take away the sins of, of those, those who believe in him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a very critical see, see a killer, point. See a killer see a killer <laughs> okay. And therefore, how he does that is also a reason why he came. Right. He came to become the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. Okay. For sins once and for all time. All right, all right. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 12. So, your sacrifice here, Christ, is complete. Mm. Now, you can't, when you lose um, earlier that just um, your death of Christ, that's yes. an important thing. Yes, yes, yes. We can't talk about death without birth. Yeah. 
Aha, okay. So mm-hmm. our birth is an inception of our death. Right. Basically. It's the beginning of dying. It's the beginning of dying. <laughs> when we just birth, to yeah. survive kidogo to And so Christ's Man, death. That's a harsh reality, man. Yeah. So Christ ali joana daily since he was born since he came mm. and he knew his death is like the climax of everything so how does that christ anafanya hii one of the ways iko kwa john first john again chapter 4 verses 10 anasema Mm. First John 4:10. Yeah, this is love. Not that we loved God, mm. but that he loved us and sent his son as a propitiation or a propitiating sacrifice for our sins. Right. So Christ aki ali God ali send Christ to be born so that he can become a propitiation for our sins. Ina maanisha hivi propitiation ina nguvu. Uh, God am jam because of our sins right and so for God for God that to lie lazima blood must be shed okay right and this blood must be shed by you and so mm-hmm. Christ comes and now becomes instead of you and satisfy God's righteous requirement of the law mm-hmm. fully in his life Mm. All right? right and in his death so that ana live without sin na ana die as a sacrifice without mm. blemish right when leviticus in describe what a sacrifice to be then christ and god anangalia your sacrifice anasema what he said when christ was being baptized he baptized mm-hmm. this is my son with whom i'm pleased mm-hmm. so that sacrifice becomes like a pleasing aroma to god right that mimi nimemalizana na dhambi on him right. completely for those who believe in him believe in him mm-hmm. so that god is never wrathful towards those who believe in jesus christ okay. from the point of believing in him okay so he takes away the wrath of god and significantly is that not only his death but christ's resurrection in a, in a signify that now god amalizana na could punish dhambi in christ completely because mm-hmm. now if you if christ died and never resurrected then Namanisha is still under punishment in God. Right. But his resurrection na signify that God was satisfied and after being satisfied he has he is now he's no longer going to hold uh, his wrath against sin right. to all who believe in Jesus Christ. Mm, so Christ become uh And in other words, you can say an atoning sacrifice atoning for sacrifice. our sins. Right, right. Uh, and we can say this with the psalmist. And this for me is a very strong point. Mm-hmm. Psalm, Psalms uh, 1 or 3 verses, verses 10. Asema, he does not deal with us mm-hmm. according to our, to our sins. sins. Right. Nor repay us according to our iniquities. Amazing. So right. utafanya madhambi, All he right. will not deal with you according to that. Mm-hmm. Because he has already dealt with Christ according to your sins according mm. to your iniquities All right mm. fantastic i think that reminds me as 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 as, as uh, gidi just read is up to add on that the, the old hymn that says um you know i think i was this hymn um for christ the just for god the just is satisfied mm. to look on him, him who... and pardon me you know i mean that, that that is something that's amazing and that is why jesus christ came so that god can be satisfied with the sacrifice that was going to be given so yeah. that's very very critical truth right there Gidi, why yeah. else did jesus christ come so christ also came to be to be the savior of the world to be I the think, savior of the world yeah john 3:16 i think the most familiar to that he because of his love uh, Uh, for God so loved the world that he came to save the world. Uh, for, uh, hey, brother, <laughs> don't grab your <laughs> For God so loved the world. <laughs> that he gave his only son. But, yeah. And then, Ukisoma 17, for, in a summer for God, he not send the son to condemn the world, but to save the world. Mm. 
Mm. So 17, but in the late 18, kuna sema, but whoever do not believe in him is already mm. condemned. Mm. So alikuja ku save the world the way to mesema. Right. But if you don't believe in him, then you're yeah. already condemned. You're already condemned. See, the condemnation yeah. inakuja. Yeah. Iko. So yeah, alikuja ku save. That's why when you read uh, Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 13, Asema, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved son, right. in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of, of sin. Mm. So that's what Jesus came to do. I to from the kingdom of the darkness. dominion of darkness. Right. I to kingdom mm -hmm. And then John, first John 4, 14. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son mm -hmm. to be the savior of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically, mm -hmm. that's what... Uh, Christ came to do. Amazing. Mm. He came to be the savior of uh, the world. Just to, um, as we land the plane right now, we have maybe like, a, I have maybe like, a, I don't know, maybe like for five minutes. So let's just uh, try and land this. Why did Jesus Christ come? Okay. Um, of, he, of, he came to bring light to the dark, to a dark world. To bring light. Yes. Mm -hmm. John twelve forty six. the mm -hmm. Bible says that I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Mm -hmm. 1522 of John says, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Uh, so, of course, Christ came so that, you know, we are able to shift, to move from dark into his great right, light right. Uh, and for sure looking at the way the world is people are really broken uh, looking for answers concerning their lives mm. um, talk of the issues of even the worldview where did we come from mm. uh, where are we headed to what is their life after this after death uh, you know all those questions uh, why are we here on earth you know all those questions are well addressed mm. uh, by our Lord Jesus Christ and so by us accepting him as our Lord and Savior then we get to find the true meaning of this life mm. and even beyond this life there is hope right. so if you're there and somebody has not accepted christ i think is missing out on great uh, opportunity amazing yeah. amazing well gentlemen i mean i have uh let me see maybe like four minutes on my clock and so let me just reiterate to our, our, our the guys who are tuning in what we are saying so Christmas is critical. Christmas has been there to Lizali to celebrate Christmas. But it is important to always do things objectively. Do it with knowledge. Because you all agree with me. There are people who are definitely come every year, in, year out, and celebrate Christmas. And they have no relationship with Jesus Christ. And around that time, because they came to church for Christmas service, on a Christmas day, you will see people in a church service that you've never seen before. And you will never see again until 12 months later. Mm -hmm. All right if not five days later, during New Year, and then yeah. another 12 months, and then five days, okay. Now, is it bad for that to happen? I don't think so. I mean, it's an opportunity for them to listen to the gospel. Hopefully the pastor there preaches the gospel and don't just, just tell them, no. Mm. And so it, there are people who just go there without having a clear understanding of why Jesus Christ was born. And for us who are tuning in today, we need to be reminded of these six, at least the six that we've mentioned today. That number one, Jesus Christ came to take away the sins of those who believe in him, John 1, 12. As many as received him, those who believed in his name, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Not everyone's sin is taken away, only those ones who believe. And the question for you is, do you believe? Secondly, we are saying that Jesus Christ came as you celebrate Christmas, you get into this season where people are going to be doing many, many things, most of which is going to be very, very ungodly and most of which is going to be very godly and humane also. He came to become the perfect sacrifice of sin. The satisfactory sacrifice. The one that God looks at and is glad. And there is no sacrifice. Hakuna mbuzi mtachinja Christmas ama kuku, ama bata, ama ngombe, ama whatever else that can please the Lord more than what Christ did at the cross. And so you want to ask yourself, do you know that for sure during this Christmas? season that Jesus Christ is the only perfect sacrifice for your sin. Thirdly, we are saying that Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of Satan. You're probably there, you're bound in your bondages and you have in addictions and habits and all. Jesus Christ came during this Christmas time as we, as you think that he was born, he was born so that he can destroy the works of Satan. And he needs to do that for your life. Third, number four, we are saying that he came to be the savior of the world. The father sent the son to be the savior.
savior of the world, that those who believe in him shall be saved. Five, we're saying he came to bring us eternal life. If you're without Christ, you're in eternal damnation and eternal death. But if you receive Christ, you'll have eternal life. And eternal life, I think something that, that we probably need to mention, John 17, 3 says eternal life begins here. Mm. This mm -hmm. is eternal life, that we may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Do you know Jesus Christ? And lastly, we have said again that he came to bring light into the world. He's only reason small, but I don't know. Maramushu ulikauka fikirajwa Christmas hivu nilini, but that is why Christmas is celebrated. That's why Christ was born. And so aren't you gentlemen in the next maybe two minutes to give me a wrap up? What is your party shot? How do you apply these truths during Christmas? Therefore, aren't you to respond to that question as a way of, you know, a parting shot. So look straight into that camera. There's a young person right there. There's a young lady. There's a young man uh, who is probably just listening carefully and they're thinking, ah, man, what, what, what are these people talking about? What would you say to them in case 25th of December 2022 is their last day to live. In case the Lord calls them home, how do we encourage the guys who are tuning in to be objective in their celebration of Christmas? Saddam and then uh, Gideon, and then um, just one will be done. Yeah, uh, John still gives us reasons. First um, John chapter 3 verses 4. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sins. Is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. Mm -hmm. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Now, if you're celebrating Christ as his um, who is the, the, the incarnate God himself. He came to take away our sins. And therefore, he, if you know him, you should not keep on sinning. So ask yourself whether you know Christ or you don't. Mm -hmm. And answer to that question is, how are you relating with sin? All right. Fantastic. How are yeah. you relating with sin, Gidi? Yeah, so... I think like you've said, uh, when you read the book of Psalms, in you know, a that we should number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I think for me as the person who is doing in is to just uh, sit down and examine what you've said and examine yourself. They also Paul tells us in I think in uh first Corinthians fifteen or second Corinthians fifteen mm -hmm. that we should examine ourselves to see if you're still in the faith. Examine yourself and then also number your days. By numbering your days, in case you see the code Nasemanga, twelve days to go, nine days to go. So tell yourself you have zero days to go. Because you may, as a Christian, every day when you leave, we have zero days to go. You may die today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then after you've done that, now live for Christ. All right. Yeah. yeah just to. Uh, okay. For me, I know during Christmas, there is a lot of ogis uh, drinking and all manner of evil things going on. Mm -hmm. And year after year, maybe this is what you have been doing, but you've never tried Christ in your life. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'll say that just if you don't have Christ in your life, try him mm -hmm. and, and you won't regret. Right. And if you have Christ in your life, keep on keeping on. Fantastic. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's Christmas season and many people in Lida, as we said, are going to be celebrating and doing very many crazy things. And remember that Jesus Christ is not glorified in sin. Jesus Christ is glorified when we pursue him to commemorate the birth of Christ in sinfulness is a mockery of sorts. And so I pray that you will receive this conversation. As you come to Christmas, you'll receive the conversation and allow your heart to be right. How are you going to celebrate it? It matters because Jesus Christ cannot be mocked. He said, a man shall reap what he sows. Well, I pray that you will sow the fruit of righteousness. Merry Christmas to you. Hopefully you're going to celebrate it in a very objective way. And until next time, thank you so much for being with us for this year as well. Your support, your comments, your thoughts, your prayers have been highly appreciated. Until next time, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Kusa Podcasts.